Greetings and salutations. This is Evelyn O'Malley, Lady of the Realm. Going to tell you, I saw like the weirdest film No to Man and it goes by the name of Freddy's Dead. Nightmare on El it's a Nightmare on Elm Street film, yeah, but yeah, I think it's Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare. I don't know what happened. I this video is basically just gonna be me talking about it. So you know, if you want to see it. Stop this movie. I believe it comes out on Thursday around like three o'clock in the afternoon on channel oh A and C if you get that channel. But it's basically Freddy takes like this kid and who no, John Doe, because he doesn't have a name, that's right. Hey, he's supposed to be someone. Anyways, not important. Anyways, carry on. Uh, he pushes this kid out into the real world, and, you know, out of the dream realm, you know, how he attacks people in their dreams and stuff, so that's where he is, and it gets kicked out of there. It's just an interesting line that I think they actually used in, uh, all dogs go to heaven too. Like, now be a good doggy and go fetch. This is Freddy Krueger. He's a pretty sicko guy. Just okay. Let's put it this way. Um, an example of what he looks like. You know, he's the guy with the claws and the red and green striped shirt. And he's known for killing people. Huh. Huh. Um, I thought it was a very... Oh, sorry. I wasn't give my opinion just yet. I gotta tell you the rest of the movie. <laughs> Anyways, the kid runs off to, like, this town. I can't remember the name of the town. It's not important. Anyways, but... He goes to the middle of the town and talks. It goes to like this juvenile home or yeah, like juvenile detention home place where you know they take in all these kids who have done things like burn cars and. I think he means like three kids. One that's one a girl who's great at boxing and has a bit of an anger issue. And I swear to God, the dialogue for this character is just weird. In fact, no dialogue for everyone in this movie is pretty weird. Oh, okay. And then there's another kid. And he sounds like he's supposed to live in New Jersey, and he has like this. He has to wear an ear. Uh, hearing aid, aid, and he's kind of obnoxious, so obviously he's the kid with the neurotic, oh my god, everything's gonna kill me, sort of thing going on. And then you got, like, this stoner kid who is in there for burning a car and apparently doesn't have a very good relationship with his father. You don't go into that, so don't worry, it's not, you're not getting emotional, it's just, it comes up later, I'll get to it, but anyways, the rest of the film talks about, about him, and it's probably like, well, I don't want to be like my dad, and I think his dad's like some business guy or something. Again, not very important. Okay. Um. Trying to remember what else. Oh, uh, yes. I believe 
they were said, they talked about say uh, some deal with a guy in a van of which they all jump into and they they're all in when they're trying to find the when the woman who's in charge of the John Doe her character and taking him to God knows where I think it's his home or something, but since he can't remember anything Hey. Hey. It's in the middle of nowhere, you know. And I think there's like a part where they try, the kids try to drive the van and they go all the way around town and it's like they go around a circle and can never get out. And till they find like this haunted house or well not haunted house, but you know, this empty house where they can stay and Stuff like that. And I'll be honest, the rest of the movie gets kind of like. It edges on a bit creepy, like. A bit creepy, but then, you know, like most of those films from the 80s and 90s that were supposedly horror films, and yet were part of a series franchise thing. They're a touch bit laughable because certain things that you're like, you know, if a ghost actually did these things, we wouldn't be laughing. <laughs> no, in reality, we wouldn't really be laughing at all the scenes. But, uh, yeah, there's a part where they have the. I don't mean to be horrible with stoners because I swear during the 90s we're not kind of stoners. But. They had him, and it was a part where Freddy actually has him hooked up to like a video game thing, and you know, it, it, to me it's like I kind of wanted to laugh, but also be incredibly creeped out at the same time because this is a sick or psycho freak you really shouldn't be anywhere near children, but still, this is a sick, twisted, bizarre film. I haven't gotten to the bizarre part, and I might not, because I really don't want to spoil it for you, just letting you know. Oh, oh, oh God, it's like 7, 1, 20, 1 in the morning. Oh, yeah, this video should be uploaded on Wednesday, I think. And, you know, just for those people who, yeah, I, I don't want to upload it. After you guys see the film, I kind of want to spoil it for those who haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but not entirely. <laughs> but I found this particular part to be funny just because they have a hooked to like a video game handheld thing, you know, back in the day kind of thing. So for those people who know what I'm talking about, yeah. Uh, for those who don't, sorry. Or in the wrong decade, apparently. No offense. <laughs> but yeah, I had him hooked up to it. And he's going through this house and punching balls. And I guess, yeah, that's right. He got swallowed up through the television and while well, they're playing, like, in the Gata de Vida, it's. For those who don't know this, uh, it's by Iron Butterfly. And. The song is about. It's actually supposed to be in the Garden of Eden. Eden. Swedish seventies rock bands. I, I don't even want to go into it. <laughs> very pretentious people, apparently. No offense, but yes, very pretentious. Except for the Beatles. Beatles were awesome. Yeah. Might have been a few other bands, but you know what? It was the 70s. I'm just gonna go with just the Beatles being a little less high on themselves. <laughs> but anyways, I thought that part was kind of creepy and hilarious for so many reasons. Because like I said, this is supposed to be a horror film. And it kind of shows how... Yeah, the show is like, okay, we finally just got to the point where Freddy Krueger 
or at least we probably got past the point where Freddy Krueger is really not scary anymore. He's more like just like this very obnoxious character that comes into your dreams and leaves. Frankly, here's how I look at that. I really wouldn't want him in any of my dreams. One, because uh, my dreams are pretty darn weird without even trying, so he doesn't need to be there. Because, um, and two, even if he was there, <laughs> it's not like I couldn't tell. It's just, ugh. It's too weird. Just too bizarre, but... But I enjoy the film because, I don't know, some of you have said, oh, well, it was fun. I thought it was fun to watch because, it, in fact, in my mind, when they had the boy punching himself through the wall and going through stuff, like in a video game, they, I... It was kind of funny, except for, you know, the dad, like, the be like me, pixelated father thing. That was kind of funny that you could beat him, but it was also kind of bad, like, wow, you know, that's really gonna hurt when he comes to, but, you know, the surprise is exactly how some people who are mentally insane, not saying that, you know, when you're, when you're high, you go do crazy over-the-top stuff like this all the time. Because, no, actually, that would be incorrect. Probably, I don't know, I've never tried the stuff, don't plan on trying it. It's just, a lot of people talk about it. And, you know, we have so many films that show people who do it, shut up, phone, doing it, doing that sort of stuff. And they act all forms of crazy, like, Oh, dude, it, no, it probably just slows down your reaction and stuff like that. That's probably all it does. That's the end, makes you sleep and eat more. That's it. So, you're more likely to just suffer from, uh, from obesity and just be very lethargic. That's it. It's probably the worst thing you're going to get, but, uh, I don't want to say too much because I don't do it, Ed. That's all I've heard, and I've only heard that on here on YouTube, so I don't know. So, it's just, watching this film, I'm thinking, back in my mind, yeah, you know what, this is probably exactly how the stoner, how a stoner views <laughs> himself, in a way, like, oh yeah, I'm invincible, I'm gonna punch myself through a wall. Oh my god. I, I just think it's funny, and I go, well, now we know the you know exactly how video games were created. <laughs> like, see, folks, now we know. But anyways, <clears throat> my personal take on the film is I enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of creepy, funny, the way they're supposed to be. And I've seen other films like this. Beetlejuice is one. I'll talk about that at another time. But not now. But I wanted to talk about this a long time ago, because I had forgotten it. But it's one of those films where I'm going, only the 80s and 90s could come up with this film, because any other decade would have been just, oh my god. Like, I don't know what the heck I'm watching, but that's it. That's basically what this would be. Anyways. This is Evelyn O'Malley, Lady of the Realm. Yeah. Same. Good night. <laughs> yeah, not, not Freddy Krueger. Oh, um, also I wanted to mention, if, uh, one other thing, if you are watching this movie for the soundtrack, Screw it. It's not worth it. If that's what you're looking for. Is it barely even there? Like, anyways. Anyways, this is Evelino Ballet, Lady of the Realm.
say good night.